are you all doing i hope you're all doing fine welcome back to my channel thank you so much for returning back here if you are a returning subscriber god bless you but if you're new here hello welcome to my channel please before you leave remember to subscribe and when you subscribe click on that notification bell it is down there so that you'll be the first one to be notified whenever i upload a new video i promise you you will always enjoy every content that i upload so dear friends in our today's video we are going to be having a story time of a Kenyan lady by the name of Doreen, 22 years of age, who found love on online dating apps in less than a month with a Norwegian guy. His name is Lush. He was 27 years old at that time when they met. And guys, today's story is among of the stories that really touched my heart due to what Doreen went through in her life before finding love and even after finding love. So get ready to cry tears of sadness, tears of joy and happiness. It will also inspire you a lot. Maybe you are in the same situation that Doreen was in before finding love. So it will talk to you that girl, do not worry, you can still find love. If Doreen was able to find love in the same situation that you are in right now, why not you? So just keep moving forward, keep searching. You deserve to find love and you're gonna find that love. Not only that guys, we are going to learn a lot. And guys, without wasting much of your time, let us jump into this beautiful online dating success love story about Doreen and Lash. So dear beautiful friends, Doreen's story starts with her past love relationship experience. How was it like? Was she in a relationship with a Kenyan guy? And if yes, we should know. How did it go? <laughs> what was her experience? What pushed Doreen to join online dating apps? How did she come to know about online dating apps? So dear friends, Doreen tells us that no, she was not in a relationship with any Kenyan man, never dated any black man in her life. Swear to herself that I will never ever date a black man in my life. Better be a nun. I know right now you are confused and some of you are so angry at Doreen. <laughs> <laughs> not wanting to date a Kenyan guy, not wanting to date an African man, but just hold on. We are going to know what pushed Doreen to that extent. So dear friends, Doreen tells us she really had a very bad childhood trauma and experienced it all. Anything bad you know a child can go through, she went through that. Because Doreen lost her mom at the age of nine, may her soul keep resting in peace. So after losing her mom, the relatives took her, but they kept on sending from one house to another, mistreated her very much, turned her into a house help for grown-ups and for kids who were older than Doreen. But not only that, the worst guys is that Doreen was molested. Tells us, imagine a grown-up man inserting fingers down there. It is such a traumatic thing a kid can go through. So Doreen kept on talking to her aunt, reporting what was going on, but the aunt never listened. Even if she had proofs on her body, her aunt chose to believe the husband. Doreen was so frustrated due to that her aunt couldn't help her and because she was scared of being raped she decided to run away from her auntie's house and became a street kid oh my god it is so heartbreaking so Doreen became a street kid out there it wasn't easy at all and nobody came for her rescue so after one year of suffering as a street kid decided to turn to her father because her father was still alive called the dad was like dad help me so the dad was like it's okay you can come to the house Doreen went to her father's house to stay with the father so after reaching to the dad's house you are going to all be shocked to what this dad did it is so so sad and it created more trauma to Doreen this dad was greedy enough 
to sell Dorin to an old Maasai. He was paid lots of money and was taken to that old Maasai house. Dorin tells us she was sharp enough to know what was going on that her dad sold her for marriage. So after reaching there, that Maasai man told her, be comfortable, this is your home now. Dorin could cry day and night. Imagine guys, a child of 12 years, very, very young. She kept on crying. And then one night, this old Maasai man wanted to get intimate with her. She screamed, cried a lot, but tells us those Maasai men can be cruel sometimes. So you can cry and scream as you want. They don't give a damn shit. So eventually God helped her. She escaped. But remember, it was at night. Maasai men can run <laughs> they are used to stay in the forest you know that environment so there is no way that Dorin could run faster than that Maasai man eventually and returned her to the house she kept on crying that night he did not keep on trying again to get intimate with her so when the morning came Dorin was like I have to get myself out of here otherwise my life will be miserable and I am so, so happy that she was sharp enough to find a way out to rescue herself. So when this Maasai man in the morning went out with the cows for grazing, that is when Dorin got a chance to escape. She escaped and started running. So she kept on running and running until she found people. So when she found people, asked for the phone so that she can call someone to come for her rescue. Tells us two of her sisters were married already and another three sisters didn't know even where they were living. At the same time, couldn't even call her aunt or any family member because her trust was gone. So what she decided to do, decided to call one of the ladies who grew up in their house when her mom was still alive because tells us her mom was such a kind woman who used to take care of homeless people including kids so knew one of the lady that grew up in their house called her first to come and rescue her tells us it was around 10 a.m then the lady told her ask someone to tell you where you are then tell me so that i can come there and pick you so she asked they told her and then the lady said i will come to pick you she waited from 10 a.m till 10 p.m that is when the lady came to rescue her and that is when her nightmare with that old maasai man ended so friends now you know why dorin was like i will never marry a black man an african man due to that bad traumatic experience that she went through at the younger age so guys when dorin was rescued was like i am going to study and prove my dad wrong because her dad and some other relatives were like her mom gave birth to six girls those girls are going to be obviously turned into prostitutes it is very very bad mindset and that is how they used to say even when the dad decided to sell her to an old maasai man he was like women are for only getting married nothing can come out of women so dorin was super super angry and wanted to prove them wrong that you were wrong you were wrong you were wrong look at me now how i have become very successful strong woman so she decided to start studying tells us it wasn't easy at all because that woman who took her in it's not that she was rich no so dorin had to fight on her own look for a job so she could work and study at the same time but god is good reached the university and was so so proud of herself so friends when dorin finished studies she was 21 years of age but never dated any man just like i mentioned before told herself if i am going to get married i will get married to a white man if not i'll just become a nun and because dorin was sharp she was a sharp girl <laughs> found out about dating apps and the first dating app she came to find out 
was okay cupid so after finding out about okay cupid had to join set her profile everything good good and within a month she found a guy from croatia that guy was the first boyfriend ever so he was serious they started dating tells us they dated for two good years but eventually things could not work out they broke up so after breaking up with that guy from croatia she stayed single for a while but again told herself if i went on online dating apps and i found a serious guy a real guy it means i have good chances to find a husband there so she believed on online dating apps was very very positive that she will eventually find a serious guy that will marry her so she decided to return two online dating apps and started her search again so when she returned again two dating apps try again <laughs> for the second time started chatting with men from all around the world but most men were not serious some were asking for nude pictures some wanted to do online sex she really came across very strange strange people who were online only for games she wasn't getting what she wanted and then one day in less than a month of joining that dating app someone from norway texted her so you know i've been telling you when a guy texts you you should go through his profile <laughs> to know him more if you guys are compatible <laughs> yes went to his profile but sadly is that this guy's profile was blank had only one photo and then his name and the country where he is coming from nothing else so when Doreen saw that was like mm, this guy must be a pervert <laughs> or something he is not serious at all why is that his profile is blank plus he was very young so Dorin was like a 27 years old guy will never be serious so was focusing on more older guys believing that they are mature and they are serious so she had to respond to this guy and she was like stay away from me i don't like you i will never like you with your age i don't believe you so don't disturb yourself to write me a message <laughs> So Doreen tells us that online dating app has become a game for some people, a place to show off how many people you have been talking to. It's so hard to find someone serious. That is why she was very, very strict with that Norwegian guy and kept on ignoring him for two weeks. So after ignoring this Norwegian guy, his name is Lash she kept on chatting with other guys though still no one was serious so one day tells us she was so depressed it was 2020 covid period was going through a lot very bored then told herself let me log in and you know waste time <laughs> chat with people as she was going through her messages found that that norwegian guy kept on sending her messages for those two weeks that she ignored him so when she saw his message was like what's wrong with this guy why is that he is not giving up she was really angry <laughs> at him and wrote him a very long message of how she despised him <laughs> but surprisingly this guy replied in a nice way <laughs> oh my god some guys can be really really good so after lash replied in a nicer way they started chatting and Doreen tells us the conversation started flowing she was even surprised of how the conversation was flowing so after two days lash asked her if they could exchange whatsapp numbers and he was like let's exchange whatsapp numbers if you don't like me you are going to block me <laughs> so they kept on talking and tells us a week later they were deeply in love with each other she tells us she had never imagined something like that can happen but sometimes 
people fall in love unexpectedly and that is how it happened to them so guys when they decided to be girlfriend and boyfriend it was june 8th 2020 so they kept on building their relationship and as they kept on building their relationship that is when you share your past love relationship experiences you share everything because you know that you guys are so much in love with each other and you trust each other so as they were talking that is when lash told her that his ex-girlfriend the first girlfriend ever too <laughs> was from kenya kisi same same tribe where doreen is coming from she was like what a coincidence <laughs> <laughs> Even her had only one man in her life, first boyfriend ever, the ex. The same same to Lash. Even if he was 27 years of age, he had only one ex-girlfriend. Was from Kenya. You know, God works in mysterious ways. So sometimes people go through very, very bad experiences on online dating apps. Maybe I am from Uganda and a guy goes through a very bad, bad experience with a girl from Uganda <laughs> so normally you will think that that guy will never date a girl from Uganda but no <laughs> that wasn't the case with Lash and I say this is God because if Lash said that that Kenyan girl broke my heart I'm not gonna date any other Kenyan girl that means they wouldn't have been together <laughs> but because God is good he went again into a relationship with a Kenyan girl from Kisi, same same tribe. <laughs> so this couple shared a lot after knowing what they really wanted. Doreen tells us she shared a lot of things, her secrets, that she had never shared them with anyone. After trying to share those things with her loved ones but never got any help, she stopped sharing but when she met lash shared with him all her traumas everything and lash too shared with her everything about him his experience in the past all that the reason why they did that Dorin tells us it was for them to know better what they are really getting themselves into and this is so so good i even advised this in one of the story times that i shared recently that guys when you find a guy that you see he is the one you are very very sure it is good to tell him everything be open and be very honest with him it will really help you and it's gonna bring you so closer because Doreen tells us after sharing everything it really brought them very very closer so guys everything continued to go in the right direction they were so much in love with each other love was in the air <laughs> yes so started talking about meeting which is so important i've always said this if you're chatting with a serious guy of course you should talk about meeting and put things into action so they started talking about meeting and agreed that it is doreen who will go to norway to visit lash first so they started the paperwork you know arranging the documents invitation because she was going to apply for the tourist visa and when everything was ready november 2020 they applied for the visa to norway after applying for the visa unfortunately guys she was rejected the visa to go to norway they were very sad about it and the reasons for the rejections doreen tells us they did not explain how they met how long they have been together and what are their future plans but there was a way out because doreen could appeal though the appeal takes 12 months to be approved so after the rejection doreen decided to appeal for her visa to go to norway so if you've been watching my videos i've been giving you tips and one of the tip that i gave you is that if a guy truly truly loves you he's gonna fight whatever challenge comes your way
Yes, and when you are in an interracial relationship, challenges are so many. So you have to be very strong and you really need to be so much in love with each other for your relationship to work. Because without that, it will never work. So after the rejection, because Lash was determined that is ready to make their relationship work, decided to be the one to go to Kenya to meet Doreen first. So before we go to how it was when he went to Kenya, it is good for us to know, yes, these people have been chatting, they have been video calling online. Did Lash introduce Doreen to his parents? Because <laughs> I know Norwegian guys can be so, so reserved. I told you guys when it comes to their families. So now it is good for us to know. We see Lash is so much in love with Doreen. Did he keep Doreen as a secret for himself? <laughs> no guys, the thing is Lash talked to his parents about Doreen. They knew there was Doreen in Kenya dating Lash online. <laughs> talked to Doreen about the relatives that yes, they know about you. Even gave Doreen the phone numbers of his relatives. Was like, you can communicate to them. But Doreen tells us she was so scared cared you know to start writing to people you have never met so yes lash did the introduction which is so so important so if you are in a relationship a guy is still telling you cannot introduce you to his relatives friends know that something is wrong somewhere <laughs> he's hiding something from you <laughs> so guys lash prepared for his trip to kenya and he went to kenya for the first time when doreen saw him at the airport she was super super happy it was the happiest moment in her life remember she was crazily in love with lash lash too was so crazily in love with Doreen. So after the airport, they went to Doreen's place. By the way, guys, to take you back <laughs> into Doreen's real life, she was a very independent woman, worked so hard, had three restaurants in different cities in Kenya. Wow, congratulations, girl. I've been telling Doreen that you are a strong woman. And yes, she is a strong woman. Guys, think of her past. Oh my god. So they went to her house. I know right now you are thinking of the goodies. <laughs> you are ready. Your ears are like, tell us. <laughs> Did they enjoy the goodies at first when they met? Or they waited? <laughs> So Doreen laughed a lot about this and I was like, hmm, really? That is an interesting question. <laughs> but I'm going to answer you anyways. So the thing is, these people talked about sharing their goodies even before meeting, but they agreed that that first first day when Lash lands in Kenya, they will go to the hospital, make tests to know about their health condition. And then after that, they will enjoy the goodies. <laughs> but at the same time, tells us she has a sister who is a doctor. So she had lots of different tests, testing different things. Let it be COVID, let it be pregnancy, let it be HIV. Yeah, so she had all those tests at home, but was like, for HIV tests, I will go either my sister do a test on us or we go to any health center and do a test. So after landing, they went home. She was like, let's go home. I cook, we eat, take shower and then go take the test. <laughs> so I want you to guess in the comment section below. What happened? <laughs> Did they stick to their plan <laughs> of going to do a test? After arriving home, eat everything, shower. Guys, the answer is, Doreen tells us, after arriving home, she cooked, they ate, and after eating, they went to take a shower. So after taking a shower, <laughs> the situation became intense. They, they couldn't resist each other. <laughs> and happened what happened, they shared their goodies. <laughs> but remember guys, they all didn't have 
that much experience when it comes to enjoying the goodies. Doreen had only one ex-boyfriend in her life and Lash too had only one ex-girlfriend <laughs> in his life. So no experience at all. She tells us, oh my God, it was a disaster. <laughs> like crap on each other. <laughs> So funny guys but good at the same time so the answer you have it yes they enjoyed the goodies when they first met but we have a pro cinema <laughs> after taking the goodies Doreen started crying she cried for four good hours and the reason why she was crying was regretting of what she did like why did i give myself to this guy that i don't know his health condition and also her health condition was like what if i am sick what if he is sick what if i get pregnant and that thinking of getting pregnant really terrified her because she was like if i get pregnant before marriage then that's when my father will be like yes i said it <laughs> <laughs> women will be nothing they'll just get pregnant anyhow tells you that guys don't get offended if you got pregnant before marriage because sometimes things happen but due to her situation she wanted to prove her father that no i'm doing everything right not the wrong way like you thought so she cried and cried and cried lash tried to calm her down comfort her and was like even if you are pregnant i'm gonna take care of that baby so do not worry just be happy i'm not going to abandon you i'm going to be responsible so after calming down they went out and they returned back home they decided to make a test you know so that she can be at peace concerning their health condition so they took tests and they all came out good she was very very happy but at the same time worried of being pregnant <laughs> but god is good she did not get pregnant <laughs> so that is how it went <laughs> so guys let's continue with our story <laughs> after the goodies are proceeding <laughs> yeah so they enjoyed and then lash returned to norway but they talked and decided that because they were so much in love with each other, they all knew what they wanted from that relationship, which means they wanted marriage. <laughs> so they talked of getting married and agreed that they are going to get married on their one year anniversary, which was 8th June 2021. So they planned everything concerning the documents. Everything was okay, paid for everything, and then Lash went to Kenya for the wedding so after lash being in kenya for the wedding while they were waiting you know for the wedding day to come lash proposed at safari poker she was so so happy and said yes then it remained five days to the wedding they received a letter from e-citizen telling them that one document from lash is missing for them to get married they were so sad and had to cancel everything because for lash to get that document from norway and then be approved in kenya by kenyan government and then for them to get married it could have taken the whole month and lash didn't have all that time to be in kenya so the only option was to cancel the wedding lash told her don't worry we will still get married but for now let's just enjoy the moment so they enjoyed the remaining days for lash to be in kenya and then lash returned to norway so after lash returning to norway they kept on talking and decided to change the plans of getting married in kenya they were like it is better for us to get married in norway because they came to find out again that most of the times it becomes really a struggle to translate those marriage certificates because most of the times they are not trusted if you got married let's say in africa so when you come to norway to translate the marriage certificate it takes time it's lots of work so they were like no let's get married in norway so they decided to start the visa process again so that dorin can go to norway and they get married so their plans were we apply now and 
and then wait for the visa and then when the visa comes out we will get married but they didn't have any idea that the visa could come out so fast so they thought they had lots of time to prepare for the marriage documents in Norway so after submitting her visa application that day tells us the next day received her passport in Kisi at her door <laughs> I was so scared to open it was like oh my god have they refused me the visa again opening it found a stamp that they have approved for her to go to Norway she was very very happy and excited but at the same time their plans to get married again they had to cancel them because the visa came so fast she didn't have time to start preparing for the marriage documents so Lash told her you just come to Norway we enjoy meet my family and then we will plan again to get married the other time <laughs> so after receiving her visa she started her plans to travel to Norway the day came she traveled tells us before that didn't know even Norway existed <laughs> she was so happy arrived at the airport phone lash there waiting for her they hugged to see each other again it was really really a happiest moment they went to his house and then the second day lash's mother came to visit she cooked to gali for her they enjoyed she was so loving treated her so so nicely and because it was december 2021 then lash's mother invited them for christmas we have a little afro cinema <laughs> about christmas party at lash's mother's house <laughs> so the christmas day came and they went to Lashi's mother. Arriving there, they had prepared wine for her. Tells us Lash doesn't drink and drive. <laughs> he drinks a little even at home, but most of the times if he buys wine, it's only for his wife, <laughs> for Doreen. So Doreen found that Lash's mother had bought red wine and white wine. So she was like, we are going to be sharing them. Doreen drinks only red wine. <laughs> but she didn't know that Lash's mother drink white wine. <laughs> so she ended up drinking the whole bottle of red wine. <laughs> Eight became drunk till they carried her to the car <laughs> imagine guys it is so so funny you are meeting the in-laws for the second time <laughs> and then you get drunk <laughs> but this is good because she became herself <laughs> They have to accept her the way she is. So it was so fun. She enjoyed so much. Even met Lash's uncle and the wife. They treated her so nicely. Even gifted her iPhone 12 on the day she was returning back to Kenya. Tells us the day to return to Kenya was so hard for her. She was super, super sad. Because the way this family treated her, how Lash's mother was so loving. It was so amazing to be accepted by Lash's mother. Remember, Doreen doesn't have a mother. So it really, really means a lot to her. So friends, if you are wondering, you know, I cannot tell you this story without telling you if Lash was spoiling Doreen when she was in Kenya. I told you, yes, she had three restaurants but still lash could spoil her could send her money it goes direct on her m-pesa and then buy whatever she wanted to buy but tells us never asked money from lash it is him who was just sending money you know surprising her go buy this or go do your hair take yourself out eat some pizza you know <laughs> yeah just like a responsible boyfriend so he could send her money every week <laughs> every weekend just to spoil her you know it's not that she was in a financial crisis not at all and i repeat she never asked lash money he was just sending it and another thing because he had dated a kenyan lady so he knew how to do things <laughs> here we go <laughs> so friends
Prince Doreen returned to Kenya and after landing the second day, she started the process to go to Norway June 2022 for their wedding. So because she had gone to Norway already, got approved the visa to go, this time they were sure that she's going to get the visa because they knew everything that was needed for them to get the visa. So they had proofs of their charts, had the photos that they took when she was in Norway with his family, also had the photos that they took when Lash was in Kenya had literally everything submitted and after two days again she was approved her visa to go to norway june 2022 for the wedding so she traveled to norway that same same june 2022 and on her arrival sad news guys lash lost his dad may his soul keep resting in peace amen so the second day had to go to the church to view the body then the burial so friends after two weeks of her being in norway we have another afro cinema guys please keep praying pray for your relationships pray for your life because when you stop praying that is when the devil comes in because he is there fighting against your happiness when things are going good in your life so Doreen tells us as they were busy organizing for the wedding one day she was at home seated not doing anything had really a sharp pain on her knee couldn't move couldn't walk couldn't even raise her leg to 90 degrees. She was feeling the pain that is so, so unbearable, started using the wheelchair. Can you imagine, guys? For me, when I heard this, I was shocked, like really, really shocked. So they took her to the hospital and tells us three people were trying to straighten her leg she was shouting crying screaming the african way due to the pain that she was feeling they checked the leg nothing guys nothing tells us three x-rays were done on her leg but they didn't find anything also took an mra scan nothing at all till now she's still shocked and thinking of what really happened so she kept on using the wheelchair lash held Helping her on everything like when she wants to go to the washroom when she wants to take the shower it was lash that could carry her take her to the bathroom wash her and carry her again put her on the wheelchair helped her on literally everything she really thanks God to give her a husband who really loved her unconditionally and took care of her when she was in that condition. So she stayed on a wheelchair for two months, was so worried. They had to cancel the wedding because she couldn't walk. How could they have done the wedding? So they lost money again for the wedding preparations. They concentrated on taking care of her leg. Lash told her, kept on promising her that even if it is the last day of you returning to Kenya, we must get married. So don't worry at all. And because we serve the living God, after two months, she started walking baby steps. So friends, when it remained a week, they decided to start planning for the wedding, but it was a rush, 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 and they didn't have money to do the party anymore because they had spent lots of money in the hospital. Tells us they spent 127K Kenyan shillings in the hospital. Even Lash sacrificed a lot to buy her wedding dress, not to buy himself shoes and a suit, but bought a wedding dress for Doreen. Oh my God, this guy is really good. Was like, I want you to be happy. I want you to be pretty. Tells us a dress was a bit smaller on the bus, but she was so, so happy due to the sacrifice that Lash did. So they waited, everything went well, 
congratulations to you Doreen and Lash. So after the wedding, they called her parents. Then after one week, his parents came, they did a barbecue, a little bit of a party at home. Everything was good. They really enjoyed. Because at the end of the day, guys, what matters is the happiness of the two of you. Those us, they couldn't even go to the honeymoon because they had spent lots of money before getting married. Lash had gone to Kenya five times. Imagine that is money inviting her two times that is money then the hospital they really spent a lot and now you will believe me when i tell you that being in an interracial relationship it's expensive it needs a guy who is really prepared because some challenges happens and you have to spend more money so never waste your time on a guy who is telling you that he can't pay for a ticket for you to go visit him never ever so guys right now they are planning to do the grand wedding reception in summer this year i wish you luck guys <laughs> and also go to honeymoon just like how they wished because that challenge has passed <laughs> So guys, after the wedding, she had to return to Kenya and when she arrived in Kenya, started applying for the family reunion visa so that they can close the distance. Guys, that is money too. <laughs> so this tells you why they didn't even go to the honeymoon because you go to the honeymoon and you still need money to close the distance. Oh my God. <laughs> it is really, really hard. Lots of challenges. I told you it is hard to find love online, but once you find love, exist loads other challenges, you know, <laughs> to overcome. So after applying for the family reunion visa, she got it November 2022 came to Norway. I remember that's the time when I communicated with her on Instagram because this lady is such a lady that is so, so energetic. She is so positive. So it is her positivity after finding her on Instagram that pushed me to write to her and ask her for this story. Actually, for me, I thought she lives in Norway. Told me, Bella, I just arrived today from Kenya we have closed the distance and i'm super super happy so i asked her for the story she accepted and told me even in norway one of the biggest magazine had shared their story so she was like yes yes bella why not i'm going to share the story so that is when i came to know doreen i'm gonna be sharing her instagram page name here or here so that you guys can follow her and get those positive vibes <laughs> learn one or two things because we always learn from each other <laughs> another thing guys i almost forgot when they closed the distance she came to norway i think after a week got sick out of nowhere was taken in the hospital and stayed there for two weeks she sent me the photos and i was like what what is going on she was like bella pray for me so she stayed in the hospital for two weeks and then returned home thank god so christmas time came and same same christmas time they all tested positive for covid so they stayed indoors they didn't join family during christmas because they had covid and after christmas then the new year came they were negative that is when they joined their family you will see the photos here or here of them enjoying new year with the family so when we talked of all this situation of being sick that is why i told you guys you should always pray never stop praying so when doreen got into a relationship with lash and then got married i think some people thought that the relationship will not work so after getting married they were like oh so they were able to get married their story is a successful one some people stopped talking to her for no reason oh my god i don't know why people can have such kind of hate or jealousy so guys let's always keep praying and let's keep doreen and lash 
into our prayers so God can protect them and protect their marriage. So the big question guys, which dating app did they meet on? They met on OkCupid, okay same same dating app where she found her first boyfriend yes and tells us she was not paying on okay cupid because even the first boyfriend found him for free so she was like if i found that one for free why should i pay so never paid and found a love on okay cupid so guys i know this story has been long but you have learned a lot quickly to her advice that is very very important don't click off yet please please <laughs> So her advice number one is stop comparing because everyone is blessed in a different way. And this is true. It tells you that what you have, others don't have it. And what you don't have, others have it. We are not perfect. You can't have everything. So stop comparing your relationship to other people's relationship. Don't concentrate on other people's relationships and forget your own relationship. Build your relationship. Keep searching. Concentrate on that because that will be your happiness. Because if you're looking for the man for marriage, to marry you and then be happy, if you find him, you will be happy. But stop, stop comparing. There is a video coming soon talking more about this comparison and social media kind of a thing. Because there is a lady who almost lost the good guy, the right one because of social media because of admiring and comparing her relationship with the relationship that she sees on social media so please please stop the comparison even doreen advises you that her advice number two is be patient because her time is not your time keep searching your time is coming very soon her advice number three is about your profile so she talked of these things concerning your profile one of it is you shouldn't look homeless just because you think a white man wants a woman who is natural please take care of yourself if you don't like makeup at least make sure your hair is okay you dress nicely your nails are okay you look good presentable <laughs> it's very very important because when you are on online dating apps it's like you are marketing yourself so you should make sure you look your best if you like to do makeup don't worry that a man will reject you just because you have makeups on your face what you need to do take a photo with makeup and take another photo without makeup upload them so that he can see you with makeup and without makeup another thing she advised you concerning your online dating profile is to upload enough selfie as possible because with a selfie a man gets to see you closely on a closer look near than a full photo change photos don't just leave the photos for six months or three months Change photos if it is possible every week. Make sure you change your photos. Make sure you edit your profile. When you change photos, try to think of some good words to put. Change your profile. The last thing she advised you concerning the profile is also look into the profiles of other women so that you see what they have written. <laughs> and try to change your profile as you edit add some words that you got maybe from profiles of other women that you saw they were good Her, another advice that i think it is very very important that she gives you is be clear on your profile of what you want if a guy comes and he's like he's looking for friendship and you know on your profile you made it clear that you are looking for a serious relationship that will lead to marriage don't be like let me give him a chance maybe he's gonna change she told you you will never change a man who knows what he wants and even if you say let me give him time how long are you going to wait till he changes he will never change so just be clear stick to what you want 
please please that is the way to success so last but not least she tells you give a hundred your relationship and let a guy give his a hundred not 50 50. you have to invest time you have to build your relationship that is why it is good to always communicate because that is how you build a relationship especially if you are in a long distance relationship but if you don't build your relationship don't expect to date a guy for a month or two months then he engages you then gets married to you no you get what you give so if you build your relationship well you give it time then your relationship will last forever but if you don't build it you don't give your a hundred percent don't expect a guy to give his a hundred percent that means that relationship will never work the last advice that she gives you is that prostitution is not an option at all for her she was in a situation where she didn't have any option but never turned to prostitution never slept around with men so you have to fight for your life you have to maintain your dignity See, as a woman you have to be strong but never choose prostitution to solve your problems at all we have seen how she had a very bad childhood was sleeping on the cartons tells us she never believed that she could have a bed one day and sleep on it have a mattress never she could eat in the trash cans so she had a very very bad 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 childhood but god raised her up came out stronger she is a strong positive woman like i told you if you follow her on instagram you will see what i'm telling you guys so don't choose prostitution as an option no no matter how you are in a difficult condition always work hard no situation that is permanent it's gonna change and you who is looking for love you will eventually find love dear friends thank you so much for watching this video till now be blessed please if you have liked this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends family everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something comment below what you think about this video watch my other videos too they are super good subscribe if you have not subscribed join the family thank you for subscribing until next time guys i love you so much you're always here in my heart ciao ciao Mwah.